Oh, great. So, uh, you know, so the first thing I want to talk about is just, I guess, for those watching who may not necessarily be familiar with Frasley, can you guys start off by maybe giving just kind of a quick overview of you know, who you are, what you do, that sort of thing? Danny, you want to take that? Yeah, sure. So uh, Frasley is uh, one of the largest fiction uh, 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 manufacturers uh, in the world. Uh, we've headquarters in Brazil. Frasley sells to more uh, than 120 countries worldwide. Um, we have operations in South America, uh, US, China, uh, Europe, uh, uh, India. So it's a, it's a, a company uh, exporting and selling to all continents worldwide. Um, here in North America, our main focus is the commercial vehicles, uh, but in South America and in other countries, we are pretty strong also on the light passenger uh, 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 market. Uh, and we have solutions for friction, either for uh, uh, airplanes, industrial uh, friction materials, motorcycles. So we have a, a very uh, big range uh, of products. So you guys are definitely a friction company. Yeah. <laughs> Presley is also part of Randon Group, which is uh, many other businesses as well. So they're one of the top 10 trailer manufacturers in the world. And they also do suspensions along with uh, Foundry. They're a partner for Yoast uh, in South America as well. So a well-rounded uh, company and a great organization. They also have a JV with uh, Meritor Masters for foundation breaks in South America and subcomponents as well. Yeah. So is is um is the Randon Group or I guess Frasley is it a privately held organization? So Randon is private held, but Frasley is publicly traded in South America. So. Mm. Okay, got it, got it. And then here in North America, so let's kind of focus on North America. Um, so you all have an office in the Detroit area, right? Yes, we just relocated to Auburn Hills. So after uh, about five years of being in Southfield, Michigan, we've relocated to a new office in Auburn Hills. It's, uh, we've more than doubled our space. We have uh, a warehousing space and the opportunity to have a small garage in the, in the back of the facility as well, along with expanding our team here in, in the U.S. Got it. And it's, and it's the, so your office is mainly from a, it's a sales support and engineering support, right? Both? Yeah. Correct. It's sales marketing and engineering. Yes. Got it. Okay. In um, Prattville, Alabama, we have our, uh, our plant, uh, which is dedicated for pads, uh, air disc brake pads and hydraulic pads, uh, and also some off-highway uh, uh, materials that we produce in Alabama. Uh, all drum brake linings we produce in Brazil, and we ship from directly to U.S., but for pads, we, we have this plant dedicated here in, in, in Alabama. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah, and it's, how long has that facility been in, in the U.S.? How long have you guys had that? We've had it 10 years now. Yes, yes. So this plant was, uh, uh, we bought this plant, so the, the plant was already established there. But uh, uh, we acquired the plant, if I'm not wrong, in 2008. So, got it, got it. And right now, so it's mainly manufacturing uh, the disc, air disc pad, air disc and hydraulic pads, and as uh, Danny mentioned, some off highway air disc type pads as well. And then uh, we're also be expanding into the rail business there. So. Yeah, and no, I was going to talk to you about that. So, so I, you know, a few, I guess, weeks ago, I, you know, I saw the release where you guys launched the new railway friction shoe. Um, so is that a new segment, new market for you all? So in South America, uh, Frosley, South America is a leader in rail friction. Uh, one other thing is uh, part of the trailer manufacturing. They also manufacture rail cars in uh, Brazil as well. But uh, so we're taking the competency that we have from South America and bringing that to North America. So Frosley is the majority supplier in South America today. Obviously, they don't have uh, the winters there. So we'll be doing uh, winter testing, which we've already done. And we've received our approval certification from uh, TTCI and the AAR so we can begin selling next year. And uh, the Prattville facility has made some improvements to some of their equipment presses to allow us to start that. So by probably first or second quarter of next year, we should be in production and running to sell. Okay. Now, just this may be a dumb question, but is this is this like freight and cargo rail or is this like pass, passenger 
real? It's, it's definitely not a dumb question because uh, there are different segments. So there's a segment we'll be entering into freight cargo initially. So that is the largest segment there. Then there's locomotion, which is a different approval that's necessary for engines and powered units. And then there's a third one that's required for passenger car. So uh, as you would say, like an Amtrak passenger train, and then getting into metros or subways or uh, high speed rails, those kind of things. That's a different segment as well. But the largest segment, uh, Brian, in that marketplace is the cargo or the rail cars. Got it. Got it. And, and in Brazil and South America, Frasley also plays on the passenger trains, uh, metro for, for passengers. Uh, but as Bob said, for now, uh, we are going to start this, uh, uh, um, in this market for cargo uh, uh, cars. And then eventually in the future, we can might consider also go to the passenger cars as well. Got it. Yeah. And, you know, the, the rail segment is definitely probably my least knowledgeable area. You know, I'm automotive guy, OEM. So from a friction perspective, you know, are the materials similar to what you would use in the commercial vehicle friction or automotive friction, or is it like vastly different? Do you all know? I'd say the majority of it's very similar. It's a, it's a much larger shoe. You know, what's kind of interesting is, is it's a uh, simple brake, if you will, on, on the trains as well. And they've also gone to some compression braking now on the trains as well. But, uh, you know, it's a uh, organic type material that we use there. So, uh, very similar in that, and then it's a, a steel back that's uh, applied. So different from kind of what we do on block today, this actually is a complete shoe uh, type assembly for us. But uh, it's a very simple um, operation, a large, large portion of friction on, the, on it. They come in about an inch and a half and a two inch shoe size for the width of the shoe. So there's uh, a couple of shoes, and then there's also... Uh, a wheel enhancement shoe that they that they have as well. So. Got it. And so, the shape of the shoe, Brian, in uh, in US, it's a little bit different than what we have in South America. So we we develop, you know, a, a shoe dedicated to the after, to the North American market, uh, being very careful about all the, the the weather differences between Brazil and the US. So this was one of the challenges for us to develop and approve our material for. For you, North America. Yeah, I got it. And, and from a customer perspective, so do you, you know, is this something that you can add to your current customer base or, or are most of your customers strictly like in just the heavy duty commercial vehicle market or maybe off highway? So this is a completely different new customer, new market, new segment, everything. Yeah, this will be a new market, new segment. So it's uh, completely, you know, basically completely different uh, for us. So it'll be a different channel for us to, to go through. So um, and then the rails themselves have different classifications. So you have uh, your high volume rails, then you have your shorter line rails, and then you have different servicing centers there. So um, similar to you, we're starting to learn a whole lot about North American rail. Yeah, got it. Got it. And Brian, and for the first two years, uh, there is like a minimum and maximum a quantity of shoes that the new supplier need to deliver in the market. Mm. It's a tryout period. Uh, so our goal is to really learn about this market during these two years uh, and then have the right uh, team, the right, you know, channels to sell our product in a much larger scale. Mm -hmm. Got it. No, that makes sense. No, that's great. So, you know, with this new, obviously you're, you're, you're expanding into this new segment, you know, there, is there anything else you guys are from a North America standpoint that you guys are getting into or investing in or maybe introducing to the other markets that you're in? So a couple of products that we have. So, you know, with the legislation leading in uh, Washington State and California for Copper Free, we're, uh, we launched earlier this year uh, in Las Vegas, the Copper Free pads for hydraulic vehicles. And we'll be announcing Copper Free pads for ADB that will be made in Prattville as well, along with uh, Freemax now, who is a rotor company that we purchased in Brazil, which predominantly has been light duty rotors, we'll be working with them to introduce a heavy duty medium rotor. So uh, more for the class uh, five, six, seven type of rotors initially. So the larger diameter rotors there. So we're excited to have that opportunity too to bring 
that fine Freemax product to North America. As you know, it's a performance type ro rotor uh, here in North America, and we continue to look at that as an opportunity for us as well. So Got it. it should help us as we expand our hydraulic offering as well. So yeah, and then would that be for like pure aftermarket or like fleets, or is that is that the market it would be? We'll be talking to, to both. Uh, initially, we'll have some limited capacity. It will be a good number, but uh, you know, as we grow our capacity, the plans from the Randon Group are to continue to invest in this rotor. We'll also be selling this rotor under the Frosley name in North America for commercial vehicles, okay. the Freemax name. So yeah. as, we, as we grow, we'll be looking at first fit opportunities for us, but also then in the aftermarket and kind of as a premium solution. So as uh, you know as well, uh, hydraulic vehicles tend to experience a lot of problems with uh, corrosion and uh, various uh, factors there that uh, we, we plan to have this be a very good performing rotor in that market segment. Got it. Yeah. And for uh, on the hydraulic market, we already have a very strong portfolio for pads. So the addition of the rotors, will, we will be able to offer to the customers a complete solution for hydraulic brakes. Uh, and just going back to our copper-free uh, ADB pad, so uh, uh, our strategy is to develop materials that will, will be extremely friendly to the rotor. One of the challenges in the industry is to develop copper-free materials that can also provide a, 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 a good lifetime to the rotor. So this is one of the characteristics of our material. Uh, and we also have options like a material dedicated to a transit vocational application and another material dedicated to a, a, a line how over the road uh, application. So this is part of our strategy to come up to this uh, market that is growing year over year with a very, very good uh, 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 formulation. Okay, good. No, that's great. So you guys, got, uh, you guys got your hands full, a lot going on. We do, we do, but it's an exciting time. So we're in the process of starting our second winter test on vehicles with the copper-free material. So we're following up with that. As, as we mentioned here in Auburn Hills, uh, we have our uh, engineering team here as well, along with some field engineers to help uh, get the products out for testing and working with our customers uh, as well. So it's, it's a very exciting time for us in Frosley here in North America. No, that's great. So the, you know, the one thing I wanted to talk with you all about too, as well, is kind of get your thoughts on, you know, the, the, I guess, drum brake versus disc pad transitional market. I mean, obviously I know, um, you know, the drum brake still the majority of, uh, I guess, of the brakes on the road have drum brakes, but I know the disc pads continues to increase, especially in the U S you know, I think, I don't know if it's maybe 25% now or whatever, but it continues to rise. So, are you all seeing that? I mean, what are you what are you seeing with I guess kind of in the U.S. transitioning from one to the other? Yes, we're seeing that, and I'd say you're pretty close with the 25 percent. That would be kind of what uh, we're hearing as well, and we we think that the transition will continue at about a rate of about five percent a year till you get up to 2030, is you know kind of range there. So um, as time goes on, the, the transition and progression to ADB will continue to come along. There'll be certain vocations that will stay with a cam or drum brake. Uh, I believe, you know, due to some of the severe service, some of the weight rating, some of those things as we see that, but we certainly see and are prepared for the transition coming to ADB. That's one of the reasons that we've talked about uh, the investments that we've made in Prattville and getting Prattville uh, in a better position to service the North American market with locally sourced, locally produced, uh, ADB pads of the copper-free version, as uh, Danny mentioned. You know, one of the things that's kind of interesting on our copper-free is about five years ago, we started making new formulations without copper. So we didn't just go look at current formulas and pull the copper out and try to find something to replace. We said, what if you can't use copper at all and started with new formulations? So, Got it. Got it. So what's the, what's the reason? So what's the reason why, why, what's the hesitation from switching from drum brakes to, to the disc pad? Is it, is it, is it cost? Is it the performance? Is it a little bit of both or, or is it, I guess maybe the maintenance, ease of maintenance? Yeah, I would say the, uh, the cost is one of the main drivers for, uh, you know, this, let's say the market is still trying to keep the drum brake 
uh, and also there all the maintenance uh, uh, the, uh, the fleets the mechanics they are pretty familiar with the drum brake systems they have been using drum brakes for a long time so uh, there is a kind of uncertainty some doubts to be more familiar with the ADB system but this is a trend I think it's gonna happen it's a matter of time uh, the aftermarket we're gonna still see a lot of drum brakes for many years in the aftermarket but on the production side uh, uh, it's a matter of time for the ADB start gaining more and more uh, uh, share uh, uh, with the OEs. Got it. So then what's the reason why someone is, why, why are you seeing customers switching to, what's the advantage of the disc break, of the disc pad? So I, I think, uh, you know, improved, uh, a slight improvement in performance with, with today's reduced stopping distance uh, regulations in there. The, the advantage to ADBs is not quite what it was, uh, say, prior to RSD uh, requirements there. But again, improved safety, um, ease of maintenance. If you take a look at it, you know, you don't have to pull the whole wheel end in most cases to replace and reline. So some of our customers, as Danny mentioned, especially on the vocational side, heavy use uh, folks, you know, they can speed up their time for uh, relines and things of that nature. Obviously, it's mm -hmm. a reline, but doing the brake job, it becomes a lot faster process there. And just as more and more technology comes onto the vehicles, and as Daniel mentioned, um, you know, we had the first wave of early adopters. Now some of those tracks are starting to come back into the marketplace as second, second vehicles there. So I think as the uh, industry acquires more and more experience with them, that they'll continue to see uh, a wave of that continuing in. And costs will most likely come down. Right now, it's, it's more the cost of the wheel end equipment than it is the brake itself, I think, is, is a big driver there. So it's a, a matter of scale and economies there as far as uh, getting the cost out of that for the end user customer. But, you know, as, as we indicated, I think the ease of maintenance over time and as fleets get more and more familiar with it, the transition will come uh, quickly. Got it. Okay. No, that makes that makes perfect sense. So, what are you what are you predicting? How long is it going to take? I mean, obviously, I know we don't know, but so what's your what's your guesstimation? I mean, how long do you think it'll be before we even get to like fifty percent? You think it's going to take years, like ten years, fifteen years? You think it'll be quicker than that, Brian? We in our uh, uh, forecast, we we are pro uh, our projection is a five is a five percent increase year uh, over year. So. Uh, this is how we, we, we build our numbers that every year ADB on the production side will have a 5% uh, increase. Um, and in parallel to that, we kind of try to talk to, the, uh, to, to our contacts in the market to see if this trend, uh, uh, it's okay with these numbers are a little bit, you know, uh, we need to adjust over the time. But 5% is a very, you know, solid number year after year. Got it. Okay. Interesting. Well, good. Well, gentlemen, I've had uh, I've had fun talking with you guys today. I appreciate you all. Uh